Dr. Pilat, uh, thank you for your suggestive lecture on the desert transformation. Uh, I'm Ria Matsumoto uh, from Medi. I'd like to look back the uh, lecture briefly at some words from the viewpoint of Medi and ask two questions to Mr. Pilat for the advices for Japanese companies. Here are my takeaways from the lecture. The major premise is that uh, digital transformation affects every part of economy and society all over the world. And OECD supports global policy makers by going data project. Recently, COVID-19 has accelerated the digital transformation and some part of this acceleration is likely to be permanent, like remote work. It's also an interesting point that even in the same industries, such as IT, pharmaceuticals, and manufacturing industries, COVID-19 is an opportunity for some companies and a challenge for other companies. In such a situation, Mr. Pilar shared his analysis on the current situation on, of the digital transformation in Japan. We may say that Japan has high potential in the digital field in the respect of internet access, mass friendly youngsters. On the other hand, Japanese society is not ready for the digital transformation in the respect of readiness to learn mobile internet as well as the lack of entrepreneurship. To change this situation, government like us must take new approaches to policy making. The points Dr. Pilar mentioned are to ready policies, set broad principles, use experimental policies and iteration, revisit policies frequently, invite gifts for and in government, and use data and data tools by ourselves. As Dr. Pila mentioned, METI is trying to use data for the better policy making, but we are still on the way. So I'd like to introduce some of our policies for this transformation. In 2018, METI's study group analyzed that Japanese companies are facing in achieving this transformations and the study group produced a report titled The X Report, Overcoming of 2025 Digital Cliff. The report described that many business owners seem to understand the importance of digital transformation as a means of creating new business models or modifying the existing ones by taking advantage of the new digital technologies in order to further grow their business and enhance their competitiveness. However, they face difficulties in data utilization for internal departments due to operational department, based construction and excessive customization of existing systems causing the system to be overly complex and closed. They face challenges in approaches to carrying out DX since employees affected by DX often reject such business reforms regardless of business owners' decisions to undergo digital transformation despite the fact that companies that do not solve the challenges mentioned at the existing system to allow for better data utilization or revise entire business systems are less likely to succeed in the long term. If companies cannot overcome these challenges, Japan may suffer an economic loss of up to 12 trillion yen per year after 2025. Uh, it means three times larger than the current loss. So we called it 2025 digital cliff. Uh, this is because of the failure of achieve the Based on the awareness of the above mentioned problem, 
Neti in Japan has developed various policies for the promotion of data transformation, industrial research transformation. In the blue box, I listed the policies to develop domestic systems for the data transformation. As a guideline for the management, we released the digital government code, digital governance code. The code is a guideline for management teams to follow as they seek to strategically take advantage of IT systems. The X promotion indices are the tools to help companies diagnose current situations and challenges in their efforts for the promotion of the digital transformation. The third one, the X certification is a unique system in accordance with the law named the Act on Promotion of Information Processing. Many formally recognizes the XYD businesses in accordance with the guideline mentioned above. The last one, BX stock selection, intends to appeal the investment market. METI and Tokyo Stock Exchange jointly select BX excellent companies. In addition to those policies, we prepare some financial support, especially for the small and medium enterprises SMEs, as I listed in the pink box. IP digitalization subsidies. Uh, the subsidies to increase productivity for SMEs by installing new systems. In the digitalization supporters program, METI provides METI provides matching and financial support for IT experts consulting services for SMEs. Last year, METI and Information Technology Promotion Agency, so called IPA analyzed the recent status of the digital transformation in Japan and found that more than 90% of Japanese companies are at the stage of not DX ready or only, only partially digitalized. It might mean the message of the X report in 2018 has not been correctly understood they had interpreted, interpreted the report just addresses the need of overhaul, overhauling of legacy IT system. In such a situation, COVID-19 divides companies into two groups, companies which could easily adapt a changing environment and ones which could not adapt. To convey the correct message from us to Japanese companies, METI released the second report on this transformation last month. The second DX report described that to ensure business competitiveness, it is important to be unable to keep changing rapidly and to reform corporate cultures in other words, outdated stereotypes. The key phrase of the DX report is Japanese companies must break away from their legacy corporate culture. So this is the last page. Being aware of those points are important. I'd like to ask two questions to Mr. Dr. Pila. The first one is, how how government could cause behavior changes of private companies. At least in Japan, government cannot force to change their behavior. The only thing we can do is to recommend them to prepare for this transformation. This approach works well for some companies, but not for the most. If there's any better approach, we would love to know it. The second question is if there's any successful country or problem or promising public policy that Japan can learn from. 
the digital transformation has been a common issue for many of the countries. Each government has struggled to promote the digital transformation of the private sector. As I mentioned in the first question, however, the power and influence of the government towards private companies are not equal to each other. The Japanese government has been developed several projects, but we are not sure what is the most effective way. As the OECD has supported a lot of policymakers, we would like to learn from you to improve our direct policies. That's a comment from me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Matsumoto, for your uh, comments and the questions. So, uh, Dr. Piro, uh, may I ask you to the reply the hard questions? Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you um, very much for um, a number of, I think, very interesting questions and, and, um, and an overview a little bit of some of the things that have been happening in Japan. Um, I think you raise very good questions. I think the first one about uh, how can governments cause behavioral change, it's not easy. And I think that is something where um, uh, I think gov very gov many governments are, are struggling with. I, I would probably um, think about a few areas where possibly uh, governments have an angle to, to sort of um, uh, change behavior. I, I think the first one is, of course, I think to the fact to, to competition in the economy, because I think to some extent, if you have competition in the economy, uh, particularly also if you have new firms coming in, uh, then hopefully, and if we think that digital transformation is something that will help firms, then probably the ones that are able to make change happen the most will also to be the ones that do better in the longer run. So you should also, uh, if this is important, see changes within the Japanese economy because of that. And I think uh, that's why I think competition is important because it, it is something that is, it is also a tool for, for change. Uh, second thing I think is around cooperation. I, I think this is also, and, and I think you mentioned digital services already. Um, I think that this is also an area where I think uh, companies can sometimes learn a lot from each other. And, and there's a lot of, there's room for, uh, for collaboration on, on, on ideas, on services, uh, within clusters, within sometimes within uh, supply chains. Uh, where I think sometimes there are firms that probably know more, that have more experience, that have more knowledge about uh, how things work uh, that, 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 uh, that can be shared with others. And, and sometimes universities can, can probably play a role in, in, in that as well. Um, uh, third point is, is I think, and, and, and you spoke a little bit about uh, things like uh, management and, and so on. I think uh, management, and, and you mentioned corporate culture, I do think management plays an important role here. I think this is where, to some extent, um, the CEOs of companies, the leaders in companies are often the people who make, can make change happen. Uh, and they need to be convinced that this is something that, 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 that can be done. So I think uh, there as well uh, to, to, uh, to uh, work with managers, to, to work with CEOs, uh, sometimes to engage in training with them. Uh, it can be something I think that could be, be helpful to, to increase awareness, to also uh, perhaps help them think through some of the, the difficult problems and challenges that they uh, will need to look at in terms of changing uh, the way their company is, 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 is working. Um, I think there are also, of course, issues around uh, the role of regulation standards, uh, where government can sometimes play a role. I think uh, flexible regu regulation, I mentioned that at the end, I think uh, agile regulation that makes it easier for firms that do want to change things, that do want to move in a certain direction, to, to try that, to, to make it happen, so that basically the, the benefits of change are probably uh, sort of become, become more easily uh, clear, whereas some of the costs and difficulties are, are, are something that government can, can address. Um, I, I think the, the, the other point here is, 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 is really also, I think, using uh, COVID-19 uh, and, and the crisis and what has happened there and, and what is also, I think, has, has happened a little bit in Japan, probably a little bit less than in some, some other OECD countries, uh, but still as an opportunity to basically say, see, it can work. It, it, this, this is an opportunity. Change is possible. Um, I think what we've seen, and, and just from personal experience in the OECD, where we've always said, well, you know, this is going to be hard to this teleworking. And actually, it has worked reasonably well. And when we're still able to function very well 
well as an organization because it was possible, uh, even though the, 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 the conceptual ideas about how difficult this might be were, were very clearly there. So I think to, to overcome it by basically showing you, you see, it, it can work. Many companies are making this, uh, this work in their own context. So I think that that's, that's something that I think um, uh, can help. And of course, um, and I think as econ many countries are now thinking about recovery packages, they're thinking about, well, okay, we've have the, had this big shock, we have had these, uh, this big loss, sometimes in GDP and output, how can we come back? So I think digital uh, technology, digitalization, digital transformation should be a very important part of that as well, because I think it can be a tool to to bring the economy back to uh, to uh, a better situation. So it, it, it needs to be part. So I think uh, those are a couple of thoughts uh, on, 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 I think, uh, how uh, governments can cause behavioral changes. I, of course, uh, some of the, the other things you were talking about, uh, subsidies and support can help, but I do think you also need to uh, look at some of the, the basic underlying uh, reasons why companies probably are are uh, not necessarily uh, changing as quickly as, as you would like. Um, I think your, your second question is always uh, one uh, we get a lot at the OECD, is there a country we can learn from? I always say you can learn from bits from, from what countries are doing. I don't think any, um, uh, there is no single model. Uh, I don't think we, we should be looking for models uh, for, well, this is a country you should try to emulate because countries are too different, institutions are too different. But I do think there are um, uh, experiences that can be learned from, uh, programs that can be learned from, policies that can be learned from and can be looked at and then need to probably uh, be, uh, be, uh, be, be looked at and, and see whether how they can be made to fit in, in the context of Japan or any, uh, any other country. Uh, so I, I don't think there's any, um, any, any specific country, but there are some countries, of course, that are really good in certain things. I know I've, I'm a, a small European country, Estonia is very good in digital government and has moved very quickly to that. Uh, there are some uh, European countries, Finland at the moment, for instance, is leading in, 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 the, in the uptake of cloud computing. Why is that? Uh, Germany has been very good in certain types of skills. Uh, so I think there are there are these these examples of specific areas where I think countries have been showing uh, a lot of uh, example, and we try to in some of the work we do at the OECD try to pick up on some of these e examples when we look at specific policy areas to say, well, these are uh, good experiences, th these are good practices that countries can can look at. But I. Um, um, I'm, I'm always just very careful with basically pointing to any single country because I think uh, what we found, for instance, we did a, a, a review of Sweden's digital policies uh, a little while ago, uh, and Sweden is one of the most advanced countries in Europe in terms of digital uh, digitalization. They're at a very high level, they're very advanced, they, they are probably amongst the, the top five in Europe, but still we found many areas where Sweden could do uh, better uh, than they were doing because even they were struggling with some issues. So I think every country is struggling with this. It's difficult uh, because it's so transformative. It's so wide ranging and so many technologies, so many sectors involved, so, so quick. Um, so I think there is probably, uh, uh, we need to learn all from each other. And I think in that sense as well, uh, there is a scope for, I think for every country to try and do a little bit better by also looking at what other countries are doing and, and, and benefiting from that experience. So uh, those are probably my uh, slightly long uh, responses to your questions, but I hope, uh, hope they're helpful. Dr. Pierre, really thank you for the informative answers for both questions. Uh, as we mentioned, uh, the competition, cooperation, management, regulation, and COVID-19 as an opportunity, is, uh, uh, those five points are really important for us. So uh, we'd like to improve our policies uh, after your uh, advices. Regarding the COVID-19 as an opportunity, uh, I'd like to add one more question. Uh, we, you, you mentioned in the presentation that uh, COVID-19 uh, accelerated the DX. Uh, some part of the acceleration is likely to be permanent, but a lot of Japanese business persons, a lot of Japanese businesses itself would like to be back to the normal, not new normal. Uh, they'd like to uh, go back to the uh, old normal. And the, this momentum is quite uh, big. Uh, this is an example of the teleworking, remote working. Uh, during the 
period of the emergency, more than half of SMEs in Japan did teleworking. However, after the period, when the number of people uh, of COVID-19 decreased, a lot of SMEs back to the normal face-to-face uh, -face businesses and finished teleworking. So we'd like to, what is the point to make it permanent? And what is the situation in OECD itself and the OECD countries? That's that's not a great question. I, I think that that is something I think we, we need to see a little bit. I think what, what's interesting from some of the surveys that are being done in some OECD countries, and I think you're seeing, and for instance, there was a, a survey on in, done in the UK um, of a number of firms where basically uh, most of those firms basically said, well, we will, uh, some of this we will, con we will continue. Um, and it, it tends to be particularly firms that were already heavily engaged in the use of digital technologies that basically have accelerated, at least in the UK, uh, this process and seem to have, have gone even, even faster. So I think there's also perhaps an issue, some of the more advanced companies in this area uh, basically see this as an opportunity to go, go, go further. Um, there are also uh, definitely, I think, firms that are struggling with this, um, and I also think we will see differences across OECD countries. As I said, we don't have a lot of good data yet to really understand what's been happening in different countries. I think we will probably see differences if we once we get that data in terms of what the, 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 the COVID-19 has really done in terms of the, the, the shift in, in, in level, in terms of you know where we were and where we are uh, now. Um, and, and I do think there are there are possibly cultural differences as well. I mean, some countries, if I look here in Europe, um, uh, uh, firms in, in, in London or in the UK seem to have gone to a much higher degree of teleworking than they have here in France. So there are differences here and in terms of, of perhaps uh, what the business culture is, whether it is really uh, perhaps even what the industries are. So there are differences, of course, as I showed you with the chart on Italy, um, some industries where there is much more scope for teleworking because of, of, of the types of, of, of businesses you're in. Uh, so in a manufacturing firm and, and where there is quite a lot of people doing things still on the shop floor, it's, it's harder uh, than if you are a bank or if you're, you're uh, a, a sort of a more a financial services or, or, or a digital service. Um, so we will probably see those differences as well, a little bit across countries. <clears throat> um, so I, I, I think it's, it's partly, I think, can we make, is there, a, a, are the productivity, are the benefits for the firm really there in doing this? And I think, of course, what we've seen with the shift, shift to teleworking and at the OECD as well, uh, we were very quickly pushed into a situation of telework at home, but there was very little preparation of making this happen. So I think ideally that was not probably the way anybody wanted to do this. You would, if you really want to move to teleworking, you need to think about, well, what's the, the situation at home? Uh, what office situation would I be having? How can I work from home? So I think if you would want to make some of these things permanent, I think companies also need to think about what needs to be done to make this work. Um, and 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 what do people do at home? What are some of the, the, the what do people do at the office? What are some of the arrangements that are in place? How do you make this work? And how do you make this as the most productive engagement that is possible? So I think uh, those are things that I think we'll we'll probably see more more thinking about if uh, some of this sticks. But I think we've heard quite a number of uh, large companies, digital companies, who basically say, well, we will we will continue with this and we will uh, we will make make some of this permanent. Uh, so I think we will see this excellent acceleration definitely in certain sectors and countries. Um, and I, I think that raises a question for Japan. If other countries, other industries are doing it, can Japan afford not to? Uh, you know, will this have a, a productivity benefit for, for other countries? Will it change the way business is being done in other countries? And what does that mean for Japanese uh, businesses in uh, the sort of the, uh, the whole uh, competition internationally in terms of the position of Japanese firms? Uh, and I think, I don't think we, we, we know the answer to that yet. I'm, I'm, you know, I don't want to tell you things I don't know yet, but I think uh, those are things we need to probably need to think about what, uh, what that might mean for, for the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Matsumoto, and thank you very much, Dr. Pira, for your uh, great answers. Uh, so the, uh, 
I'd like to the, ask the followers to uh, give the uh, questions uh, if, uh, if possible. Uh, of course, we can uh, edit it so that if you find, uh, we can do it uh, your part. So uh, I'd like to ask the uh, uh, the participant like uh, uh, Mr. Watanabe, the our uh, vice president. Do you have some comments? Uh, thank, thank you, uh, Doug, for your excellent presentation, and uh, it's very impressive. My question to you is that uh, uh, digital transformation in business sector is uh, quite important. But on the other hand, do you have any uh, advice to the government uh, how uh, they can change their own uh, working method within the government? That's that's a very good question too, and and good to see you again. It was uh, not that long ago that uh, we were uh, working together here at the OECD when you were in the delegation. So it's good to see you. Um, I, 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 I th this is not something my part of the OECD does that much on, but I do think digital transformation of governments is something that is really important. I think to change the way government itself is working. I think there are typically uh, difficulties with uh, skills within government, I think is one area. I think processes in government is, is something that is sometimes a, a difficulty. Uh, I think there are issues around um, uh, where I think I mentioned earlier on things like experimentation, trying things. Uh, that is often quite hard in government uh, in, in terms of the, uh, the ability to really try things, to try and sort of experiment with things because it's not in the government culture to try these things. So that's why I think we, we do sometimes now see um, these uh, chief technology officers, these digital champions in some countries, in some governments, that are really trying to change things within the government and really come from within the government to try and change things. And uh, there are good examples of that. The OECD has a group uh, called the E-Leaders that are, brings together some of these people uh, where they talk about, well, how do we make this, some of this change happen within government? And I think uh, that is important, of course, not only because of the, uh, the, the, the weight of government within the economy, but also I think it, it helps if government itself understands what is necessary to help uh, make change happen within the in the business sector, so uh, I think you're absolutely right. This is a really important area of of, of work, and uh, there is a lot of work at the OECD, also at the national level, to try and think with our governments on uh, on what uh, what can be done in in, in this context. So, uh, really important priority, I think. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Pierre, and thank you very much for Mr. Matanabe for your questions. And uh, uh, yes, actually, the uh, Japanese government uh, is going to establish their new uh, agency. It's called the Digital Agency uh, next September. So uh, your analysis and your report and uh, the some uh, kind of the benchmark country like Estonia or the Sweden would be the uh, good example for us to learn uh, from. And uh, um, uh, Excuse me, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Dr. Yano, do you have any comments or uh, question? Well, thank you very much. It was uh, very interesting and uh, good talk. I gave me a lot to think about. Uh, I have a couple of questions. The, uh, I actually, uh, at Rieti, we are trying to digitalize the uh, organization. Uh, as a whole. And we've been fairly successful, I, I would say. And I like every single bit of it. I don't feel like to anymore meeting with people in person and uh, I don't feel like to, I, 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 I have almost nothing I miss, except that uh, I go out with colleagues for lunch or dinner and things like that. I don't do that anymore. And if something comes back, that's kind of, kind of thing, the first thing I would like to do with my colleagues. But other than that, I think uh, things are going well, fairly. And uh, I feel the productivity of the uh, organization has increased quite a lot. The, my, my question is that to, the same question as Ms. Matsumoto was talking about, that uh, how to make this thing permanent after this COVID-19 COVID crisis 
goes away. And uh, I would like to know your advice about that. And I think, although it's, uh, we are, it's strange for me to say this, but uh, we are kind of part of the government. But although having said that, I, I feel like to have some kind of organized push that we should not give this structure up and further push it. And we would like to have some kind of uh, uh, guidance from within the Japanese society, from the rest of the world as a whole. And uh, what, what, what kind of advice could you give and what kind of thing could we do for that, towards that? And uh, the second question is, I would like to know, oh, let me go back. What I feel country a little bit problematic is to digitalize every worker's house. You can, it's easy to say that we should have a, a remote working environment, but obviously that we have a kind of technological uh, problem. Some household has a better internet access compared with uh, somebody else. And obviously somebody is more willing to pay more money for that. But then I think it's a, right now it's a part of kind of creating business environment within your household. And I would like to know how the other countries, other societies may or may not compensating for this digital transformation within their own home so that they can have a better work environment. And what the OECDs are thinking about this particular issue. I have, these, those are two questions I would like to have your response. Again, very, very good questions. Um, um, let me try to respond a little bit. I, I don't think I have, uh, we are doing, there's quite a bit of work on teleworking at the OEC on the way at the moment. I don't think we have full responses to everything and partly because I think this is still uh, evolving a little bit. And I do think teleworking perhaps in a, in a crisis situation is, is different than a permanent status of teleworking. So I think, as I mentioned earlier, I think a lot of us have been pushed in this situation, and uh, at least in, in, in the case of, of many people at the OECD, it seems to be working quite well, but it seems to be working well for certain things. So for people, if you have to write something, if you have to uh, work on something really uh, concentrated, uh, working at home and on your own is fine. Um, I think what is missing is a little bit is the more uh, the interaction sometimes uh, we can do certain things through a video meeting as we are doing right now but uh, there are also certain things that are missing and I think um, perhaps particularly the, the more informal interactions you mentioned lunches but also sometimes just uh, uh, running into a colleague somewhere, somewhere in a corridor, somewhere, and having a, a brief conversation about what is ha what is happening, because sometimes that's a, a mechanism for uh, knowledge exchange that is actually quite important, and and that can keep you informed about things that are happening. So I think that type of informal interaction, the social interaction, is something that I think people need. Um, uh, and what I think we're, for instance, uh, particularly for, for, for people who are new to an organization, I think where it is very hard to come into an organization and start with teleworking. Uh, so there are these, these, these difficulties, I think, that, that we're seeing as well. So I think we, we probably need to think a little bit about what if we go to a more permanent status of teleworking of a certain percentage and everything, what would we be doing at home? What would we be doing in the office? Because I think the office then probably becomes more of a place of exchange, of collaboration, than a time where people basically are working very concentrated on, on something. And that may have implications on for the office space, for, for all sorts of things, for when meetings are organized, for all sorts of things. But I think every organization will, of course, need to look at individually and try to figure out, well, uh, what, 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 uh, what's the best way, way to, to do this? Um, I, I think your, your, your other question, I think, on, on uh, the house as, as a place of work, yeah, that's, that's I think, a, a fundamental question as well, because, of course, and, and, and we see that as well, you know, some people are very well equipped for it, are fine, it, it works okay, they have good connections, they have space for it. 
other people are working from very, very small apartments and sometimes with more people working in one apartment, uh, both teleworking, uh, which can be very, very difficult. So um, uh, there are some, I think, uh, responses to that in some countries where what, what seems to be happening is having joint teleworking sort of spaces where people just basically come mm. to mm. Uh, a space, uh, perhaps in, in, in the place they commute from, uh, where they can come in and basically work from, from that space without going into the office, but they just have a space on their own to work. And now, of course, that raises questions, but I think that 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 is one response I think we're starting to see a little bit in some countries. So, again, I think it's something that uh, we need to, to look at and, and uh, will be uh, very interesting, I think, to see also how different countries are doing this, how different organizations are doing this. So I think this will also be a space where a lot of learning uh, will be needed to try and sort of experimentation to try and figure out what's the best way forward on this. So um, I think you raise very good questions. I can only give you a very partial answer from uh, partly from some of our own experiences at the OECD at the moment and some of the work we're, we're doing. Uh, do, do people do at OECD, some people work in a, that kind of public office space kind of places? Not that I know. I do know we have a number of people working. We have people working from abroad, uh, mm. but we, I don't think we have people working uh, necessarily from, uh, I, I don't know. Um, I, mm. I, I, I frankly don't know right. it, it, but I know that it exists in some countries. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Pia and uh, Dr. Yano for your uh, excellent discussions. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Pira, for your uh, excellent presentation and uh, discussion. It's really, really helpful for our government and our society. And uh, uh, as you told uh, in the presentation, the, uh, the data transformation uh, affects every part of our economy and society. And uh, we are now facing the very difficult age or the very, uh, a good opportunity uh, age the, in the, the age of transform data transformation. And, uh, uh, and we have to think about the uh, digital divide or uh, most affected people like the, uh, the elder people or the uh, temporary workers such as the very fragile people. So the, uh, you, uh, you showed the uh, nice chart like a, a seven uh, framework and uh, data toolkits. It's a very nice chart and compass for uh, us to the, see the, which uh, direction we're going to then the, uh, what kind of society other uh, countries are now the, uh, trying to make. The, so the, your suggestion is a really, really uh, uh, help for us. Uh, thank you very much for your time and uh, uh, advice. So uh, it's time to close the seminar. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Pira and uh, uh, Ms. Matsumoto for their excellent presentation and comments. And I thank you very much for your discussions. Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, I hope the next time we meet, it uh, can be in Tokyo, but uh, look forward to, uh, to, to, to talking again soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.